say good morning and welcome to this ceremony. We're very proud to be here. Uh, these fellows that are standing behind me here are Mason. Uh, we have assembled today to level the cornerstone on this new structure. And uh, this, aid, this uh, you'll hear me in a little while. I'll make a few comments about why we do what we're doing and uh, a few more comments about masonry in general. But at this time, I would ask you to please rise and we're gonna have an invitation. <laughs> May we pray. Most worshipful Grand Master, as we have gathered here to perform the ceremony of leveling this cornerstone, we invoke the blessings of thy divine providence upon this undertaking. May all that is said and done here today remind us of our duty not only to serve others, but to always remember that great gift comes from you. May this building serve the people of this community for years to come, and may the lives of all who enter it be directed in the path of which you would have us all to follow. And we pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. Come on, Thank you very much. You may be seated. How good it is to see the children out here. You know, this is their school, and so I imagine they're the ones that's pretty proud. But, uh, at this time, I'm going to introduce uh, Wayland Woolsey, who is going to make a couple of introductions for me and Brother Woolsey. Thank you, Rod Worthful. First of all, I'd like to honor our visiting county judge, Brother and Honorable Jim Lovell. He was around here somewhere. Uh, Jim, would you like to make any comments? Our Mayor Pro Tem, Velda Parker. Our current Mayor Bailey Staley was out of town today. He couldn't make it, but he sends his support. Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Don Jackson. Mr. Jackson, if you introduce your school board and ask them if they have any comments or if you have any. Will our board members just please walk up here with me? I want everybody to see who you are. Uh, in the process of them coming up, I'd like to say thank you all. Thank you, Masons. We appreciate you so very much. Thank you, students. We wanted to do something special for you. The board wanted to do something special for you. Uh, we hope that you enjoy this new school. We hope that your children enjoy this new school and you make Grapeland your home for a long time, okay? Thank you, teachers, for all that you do. Ms. Satterwhite, thank you for, for leading this school. We appreciate you so very much. My office staff is here. Wave your hand, Ms. Arbuckle. Where are you? She's back there in the back. And Ms. Martin. Thank you so much, uh, Christy. We appreciate all of you. I want to give the board members an opportunity to say something, if you will, please. Thank you all for coming today. Um, I'm really excited about this new endeavor the community has started on. I'm excited that we're all get to, together and be able to support it. Uh, laying of this cornerstone is, is, is an awesome uh, process that I'm really excited about and I look forward to the future. Thank you for coming. Josh Gould. I just want to say what a blessing this is, and um, we appreciate the community, and um, the kids are going to be excited, y'all. We are. Kendra Huff, Melissa Cobb, and Eddie Childress. Welcome, everybody. Um, I just want to say we have prayed many, many blessings over not only the structure, but over you guys and over the futures that you have that await you. Um, I just uh, thank you all for this opportunity that we have to serve, and um, I look forward to what lies in our future. For 
many years we've had the vision on our school board to upgrade and update our school facilities. Uh, high school was our first project several years ago. And then our eyes have been on this project for, I guess, 10 years now or longer. Uh, it's, it's not a project we take lightly and, and we wanted it to be the right timing and the right opportunity for our both our taxpayers and our students. And we, are, we, we appreciate uh, the support that we've had from the community as we move forward in, uh, in Grapeland and our education of our students and, and the opportunities that this facility is gonna have for all these young uh, children that are here today. But, but mainly it gives us that opportunity to show uh, everyone uh, as they come through Grapeland that uh, we're serious about uh, schools and we're serious about educating our children. And so we thank all of you for being here today and we thank you for the opportunity that you gave us as a board. Thank you. Next, I'd like to bring up the team from Goodwin, Glassford, or Strong, if they'll come up and, and stand with us. And we're just going to have one speaker, Mr. Mark Strong, is going to speak on behalf of Goodwin, Glassford, or Strong. They'll tell you a little bit about their organization and have words. Thank you. It's great to be with you this morning. Let me just make a couple of introductions before I say a couple of comments, but... Uh, Larry Laster is our structural engineer, one of the partners with the company. And then Hudson Henderson was the design architect and project manager. And then Tamisha Root and Jennifer Wedgeworth were both of our interior designers for the project. So we just want to say it's been a privilege to work with uh, Mr. Jackson and the school board on this project. Uh, it's been a process that we greatly enjoyed. And we hope that uh, we create a space that the students of Grapeland can learn and grow in an exciting environment for many years to come. So we just want to say thank you to the community and to the district for allowing us to be a part of this project. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate it. Final comments from the bottom of my heart. I'd like to thank the board. I'd like to thank all of our educators who are here. I see some of our teachers and staff that are here. Thank you so much. Uh, children, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you to get the best education that you possibly can, okay? Because your education will determine the rest of your life. It will determine where you live. It will determine where you work. It will benefit you for the rest of your life. This is for you. We ask you to come with a great attitude and take advantage of the opportunity to learn and to grow. That's what we're all about your education making a bright future for you okay so thank you very much and we appreciate what the masons are doing they wanted to have this dedication while the children were here uh, later we will have a grand opening okay as you can see we're not quite finished okay so even our walkthrough today will be limited to one wing Okay, and we're going to ask that the children uh, not come in at this time. The children walking through at this time, we ask them not to. It's just not safe yet. It's still a construction zone. So bear with us. You'll get in here in plenty of time. But we are inviting the public to visit. Uh, just step in and take a glimpse. I think Jack, is Jack here? Our site superintendent. Well, he's working. Okay, he's working. So I'm, I'm following Jack's orders. Jack is saying, we're still not safe, Mr. Jackson. Let's not give them the whole building yet, okay? All right, teachers, you know when you wanna come up, you can, all right? Hey, this is my time. Thank you so much, and we appreciate y'all for what you're doing to help us celebrate this grand opening. Thank you, Brother Superintendent. Uh, at this time, I would like to introduce to you the principal of this new school, and I know she's excited. I can hear it in her voice and see it in her eyes, but at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Cassie Sutterwhite.
Good morning again. Some of you have already been at our awards ceremony, but I wanted to take this time to talk about what's going in our time capsule. Uh, we will have a time capsule. If you see behind these men, they're being very careful not to fall in the hole because uh, that would be really bad today, okay? But let's start with what's going to be going in our time capsule. First thing, I want to remember every student and teacher that has been here this year. So we will be putting class pictures in our time capsule with the children's name and the teacher's name on the back. Um, after that, we have asked our grateful messenger to write about this uh, occasion today, and we will be getting that newspaper and putting it in. I created a moment in time at Grapeland Elementary, just a few facts. I thought I would read to you about our year, um, this year at 2018-19 school year, so bear with me, go switch. We have about 300 students enrolled at Grapeland Elementary right now. We have two homeroom teachers for grades pre-K 4 through 5th grade and one homeroom teacher for pre-K 3. The school day begins at 8 o'clock and releases at 317. In the car line, we identify parents by their car and by face recognition. And Ms. Taisha Walker is the best at doing that. <laughs> Our dress code, we do have a dress code of collared shirts and uh, solid uh, bottoms. All student lunches in our cafeteria are free due to a grant that we received from the state. Uh, the most talked about game of 2019 at Grapeland Elementary was Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, lots of dances that go with that as well. Our new school is equipped with interactive boards that we cannot wait to use. They are touch screen. We can write on them and it's going to help our uh, teachers teach. Can't wait to do that. We use flash drives all the time. I don't know how many of you uh, use floppy disks. That's where I started at when I was in pre-K here. We were still using floppy disks. Went to CDs and now we're at flash drives. So that will be going in our time capsule. We have five Chromebooks in almost every classroom and hope, hopefully next year in every single one we will have one. Our computer programs that our students like to use include Starfall, Cool Math, Moby Max, and Reflex. And then our funniest moment of our Grapeland Elementary school year this year was Darion pretending to be the bull and chasing Mr. Daly around the gym during our backflip Johnny bullying prevention program. So those are just some facts that we have this year. I thought that would be something fun to dig up in 25 years. We also had our third through fifth graders write about what Grapeland and Grapeland Elementary would be like in 25 years. We selected two students from third grade, two from fourth and two from fifth. And I would like to just recognize those students at this time. So if I call your name, if you would just come forward. Taryn Bush, Briley Howard, Haley Jones, Lincoln Byrne, Latrice Lamb, and Melanie Bridges. If y'all could just make your way forward. I talked to the students earlier about maybe reading their um, work they're writing but to save time because we have lots of people here we will read them in 25 years okay so give y'all a hand that's all i have thank you students you may go back we are so thankful to thank you stakeholders you. for making this happen thank you good morning again uh, we're not going to use the microphone. I think it would distort whatever we're going to do. We're going to be moving around. I believe that probably uh, you can hear us well enough without the microphone, hopefully. I would tell you that uh, what a pleasure it is to be here this morning again. Uh, I'm here in behalf of the Grand Master of all Masons in Texas, 
who is Terry Stogner. He lives in La Mesa, Texas, which is, uh, if you know your Texas geography, a good ways from Franklin, Texas. And, and so he's asked me, my name is Walter W. Rogers, uh, I live, I, and I'm going to have a little geography lesson here now. Uh, how many of you folks know where Beat Eyes, Texas is? Well, that's where I'm from, all right? And in 2013, I, was, I served as Grandmaster of All Masons in Texas, and uh, I'm considered a past Grandmaster, and so the Grandmaster asked me to preside over this ceremony, which I gladly said I would. I will tell you that education is a very important aspect of masonry. Uh, Mary Bobby Lamar, who was the first vice president and second president of the Republic of Texas, is the one we call the father of education in Texas. He was instrumental in forming the public school system. And Masons, he was a Mason. And Masons have been, uh, been advocates of education since the beginning of time. We feel like that, uh, as the superintendent said a while ago, your life depends on the amount of education you get. We all know, especially the ones with gray in our hair, how important education really is. You're hearing a lot of, and to begin with, I'd like to, to answer one of your questions that I've always asked is, why is a bunch of grown men going around wearing them silly looking aprons? All right. Well, the reason for that is that Masonry is the oldest fraternal organization in recorded history. We have records of over 600 years. And we, Masonry began in the biblical days. The Masons at that time were actual stone Masons. They, they built the cathedrals and, and temples in Europe. Uh, I don't know how, how many of y'all realize, but some of those temples took a duration of five or six hundred years to build. They were built by hand. And so one generation never built the building. It was started by one generation. It may go eight or ten generations before it was completed. But at that time, masons were stone masons, and they wore an apron, a leather apron, to protect their clothing when they were laying the stone. And it's just a tradition that has come all this way. Uh, we consider the apron the badge of a mason, okay? Another thing is you're gonna hear a lot of titles like most worshipful and right worshipful and whatever you may hear, and it has no religious connotation whatsoever. All it is is a title of respect. My title, for instance, is right worshipful Walter W. Rogers, past Grand Master of Masons in Texas. Now, it's hard to write it so long, all right? But anyway, it doesn't mean anything religiously or whatever. We just use the right worshipful and worshipful as titles of respect. I tell you that, uh, that I, in a second here, I'm gonna put this hat on. And the reason I'm gonna put that hat on is because King Solomon wore a crown when he presided over the trap during the building of King Solomon's temple. And as I told you, our fraternity is so old that we have carried traditions on uh, through the ages. The hat of the presiding officer means that he is in charge. And it comes from King Solomon wearing his crown while presiding over the crowd. I tell you that there's about 800 lodges, 800 Masonic lodges in Texas, and approximately 75,000 Masons in Texas. Uh, every every state in the union has a Grand Lodge, as we call it, and they have their own Masonic fraternity in there, although we are all in one lodge. We all recognize one another. The diversity of masonry is unbelievable. Uh, in, in a Masonic Lodge, there's never, there's two things that are never discussed, and that's religion and politics. Okay, every man has his right to his religion, and he has his right to his politics. We never discuss or argue or anything else about religion or politics. These men that you see before you right here come from every walk of life. Uh, I personally 
computer for a standard level in the cornerstone of the school, and I've built hundreds of them. I'm a construction manager by trade, so I have been in the construction business all my life. We have electricians, we have airplane pilots, we have doctors, lawyers, it doesn't matter where you come from as long as you're a good man. Uh, masonry has always stood for the fact that we take good men and make them better. We don't take bad men and try to conform them. Okay? We, uh, uh, and with that, I'm going to make a couple of comments about what I just said. Until the development of steel frame construction in the 20th century, most buildings were erected stacking stone on stone. Each part of the building was marked by ceremony. The foundation stone was the first stone placed underground at the beginning of the building foundation. The cornerstone was the first stone placed above ground level. It is usually a massive stone marking the northeast corner of the building building. At the top of the building was the capstone. The ceremonies of placing those stones were under the direction of the stonemasons who built the building, although the highest officials of the church and state usually participated, including the king or his representatives. These ceremonies were occasions for public celebrations and fairs each marking the progress of the construction of the cathedral or castle. When we level this cornerstone for this school, we will be performing a ceremony that is more than 300 years old. The earliest record of an official Masonic ceremony for a public building was the laying of the foundation stone of the new Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh, Scotland on August the 2nd. 1738. It is the one ceremony that connects modern Freemasons directly to the craftsmen or stone masons of the Middle Ages, and it is essentially the same ceremony used to dedicate many of the great cathedrals and buildings in Europe. References to the cornerstone ceremonies are found in the Bible in both the Old and New Testament, which further indicate their antiquity from a historical perspective. However, cornerstone ceremonies today are normally symbolic and rarely involve the setting of the massive block of granite of yesteryear. American Freemasons have been leveling cornerstones since 1734, when Grandmaster Benjamin Franklin presided at the ceremonies for Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Nearly 60 years later, George Washington, wearing the apron of a master mason and acting as Grand Master of Masons in Maryland, leveled the cornerstone of the United States Capitol building on September the 18th, 1793. The Statue of Liberty was conceived and designed by Frederick August Rathaldi, a Freemason, and Freemasons laid the cornerstone of its foundation in 1884. The first Masonic cornerstone level in Texas was on February the 3rd, 1838, when Reverend Littleton Fowler, Grand Chaplain of the Masonic Grand Lodge of Texas, presided over ceremonies at the very first Protestant church built west of the Sabine River in San Augustine, Texas. In 1885, Ziggy Coons, Deputy Grand Master of Masons in Texas, leveled the cornerstone of the magnificent State Capitol building in Austin. In 1994, Billy Wayne Tinsley, Grand Master of Masons in Texas, leveled the cornerstone of the extension of the same State Capitol building. More than 115 Texas courthouses, hundreds of public schools, and numerous places of worship have cornerstones that were leveled by Freemasons. The tradition in part stems from the role played by Barabo B. Lamar, who was the first elected vice president of the Republic of Texas in 1836, and the second president of the Republic in 1838. <coughs> Lamar, who also was a Freemason, is known as the father of Texas education. Texas Freemasons are certainly privileged to have been invited to level the cornerstone
home of this new school building. And we are pleased we could be here today. And we're pleased that you could be here today to witness this ceremony. And I tell you that how, how important our education is to Mason's uh, uh, and, and I'm so proud for all you ladies to be here today. Y'all make these old ugly men look good. But I will tell you that, uh, uh, and I use this as an analogy all the time, but I have in my family four daughters. I had a wife, four daughters, and a girl dog, if you can imagine. <laughs> but in my family, I have seven school teachers in my immediate family. And so we in my family believe in education. And so I'm just telling you how proud I am of y'all and what your, what your endeavors and the fruits of your endeavors are. And at this time, I, we will begin the actual leveling. It's a very short ceremony. Uh, I'll tell you that you're going to hear uh, the word amen pronounced, and these guys back here are all going to say, so mote it be when we get through saying amen, and that doesn't mean anything. Uh, all it means is, 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 is so may it be. That's what it means. It's just a term that Mason use. Uh, I know all of you have heard in your lifetime that we have uh, secret handshakes and, and we're devil worshipers, and I don't know what all you've heard about masonry, but all of it's not true. Uh, we have no secrets in masonry. We publish all of Everything we do in masonry is public. Uh, we do have modes of recognition. If I meet one of these guys uh, on the street, uh, we can prove to one another that we are brothers. Uh, and we use that as recognition symbol. Uh, I don't know that that pertains to anybody but us. We also have, uh, uh, in, the, in the past, the reason that we have means of recognition was that if a fellow left France, for instance, and went to another country to work on one of these 500-year-old projects that when he got there, he had to prove that he was an actual mason to go to work. So instead of having a written biography, well, he had a mean of rec means of recognition that proved that he was actually a practical. And with that, I'm going to begin. My worshipful Grand Senior Warden of Grand Lodge of Texas, having been invited to lay the cornerstone of this edifice, and having a symbol for that purpose, I now order that this, the representation of the Grand Lodge of Texas, do now assist me in the performance of this work. This my will and pleasure, you will therefore proclaim to the Grand Junior Warden, that the brethren and others present may have due notice thereof. My worshipful Grand Junior Warden, it is the order of the Most Worshipful Grand Master that the cornerstone be now laid with Masonic honors. This you will proclaim to all present that the occasion may be observed with due order and solemnity. <laughs> the brethren and all persons present will take notice that the Most Worshipful Grand Master will now proceed to lay this cornerstone in due Masonic form. You will therefore observe the order and decorum becoming the important and solemn ceremonies in which we are about to engage. Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, what is the proper jewel of your office? Swear. Have you applied the square to those parts of the stone that should be square? I have, most worshipful Grand Master, and the craftsmen have done their duty. Right, worshipful Grand Senior Warden, what is the proper jewel of your office? The level. Have you applied the level to the stone? I have, most worshipful Grand Master, and the craftsmen have done their duty. Right, worshipful Grand Junior Warden, what is the proper jewel of your office? The plum. Have you applied the plumb to the several edges of the stone? I have, most worshipful Grand Master, and the craftsmen have done their duty. 
Having full confidence in your skill in the royal art and remain with the need to finish the work. I find this foundation stone well formed, true, and trusty. And may this undertaking be conducted and completed by the craftsman according to the grand plan in peace, love, and harmony. May the health of the workmen employed in the undertaking be preserved to them, and the grand and the supreme grand architect bless and prosper their labors. Amen. So mighty be. May plenty be showered down upon the people of this state, and may the blessings of the bounteous giver of all things attend their philanthropic undertaking. Amen. So holy be. May the supreme ruler of all the world preserve the people in peace and vouchsafe to them the enjoyment of every blessing. Amen. So may it be. May the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, the oil of joy, and all the necessaries of life abound among men throughout the world. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon this undertaking. And may this structure here erected be preserved to the latest ages in order that it may promote the useful purposes for which it is designed. Amen. So may it be. Brother Architect has invited the influence of operating matrix to the fullest comments that by your skill and faith, the new fabric shall arrive and will add new love for your fame as a master builder. May it endure for many ages a monument of the liberality and benevolence of its founder. Amen. Medina in Egypt in the tomb of Sinedin. 
They are among the most ancient tools of operative masons ever found, dating back to the New Kingdom period between 1570 BC and 1070 BC. The three elements of corn, wine, and oil presented here today have been used in dedications of buildings since the time of ancient Rome. Corn represents nourishment and plenty. Wine represents refreshment, and oil represents joy, peace, healing, and comfort. It is the custom of workers in stone or operative masonry to place the first stone of the building in the northeast corner. The cornerstone, which is the Freemasons, a symbol of morality, is placed in the north, which Freemasons consider a place of darkness. In the east, which Freemasons consider a place of light, it symbolizes man's progress from darkness to light, from ignorance to knowledge. Each cornerstone is leveled by the ancient craftsmen with great care. So long as they erected the walls in line with the sides of the cornerstone, the wall would extend outward and be true and square, <coughs> however far it may reach. Then, with the plumb line, they built the walls above the stone. So long as it remained in line with the cornerstone, it also would be true and square. The cornerstone reminds us that if we are to build any lasting structure, be it temporal or spiritual, it must rest upon a firm foundation, one which is truly set. When properly prepared by the working tools of operated masonry, the cornerstone is perfectly square and each side perpendicular to the other. When firmly set and level, it provides a foundation, a pattern, upon which the greatest structure, structures may be erected. Thus, the building rising above the cornerstone may obtain great heights and stay true to the plan of the architect. We now see that the cornerstone is a symbol that is the embodiment of all that is perfect in form, alignment, and character. <clears throat> so too may the influence of our daily lives be expanded into the world around us, and may, the influence, uh, may that influence reach great spiritual and intellectual heights as we follow the carefully crafted venerable lines generated by a personal cornerstone well set. To the members and presiding officers of Grateful and Masonic Lodge number 473, we express our sincere thanks and appreciation for giving us this honor and privilege of leveling this cornerstone for Grateful Elementary School. May this building stand ever tall among the citizens of the state May the wisdom, strength, and justice of those who occupy it distinguish this building and this community with paramount integrity, impeccable reputation, and outstanding service. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Grand Matter. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony and uh, I want to make a comment about your students. Uh, they are so well behaved. Uh, I, I commend you teachers for being in control of your students. Ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, on behalf of the Grandmaster, as I began to say, I thank you for your being here today. I know it's Memorial Weekend, and you'll probably have places you could have been, but I know you're proud of this structure as well as we are. And on behalf of the Grand Lodge of Texas and Brother Don, we appreciate being here today and, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.